Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Um, my name is Alex DiCristofano, and I'm a PhD student in Computational and Data Sciences at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, I do want to make clear that while I'm the one presenting today, the project that I'm going to tell you about is the result of a collective effort from a large group of volunteers and community organizations. And without even one of them, this would not have been possible. So that having been said, uh, let me tell you a bit more about our team and the organization behind it. This project is a part of a working group called Grief to Action. Our members come from all over, but Grief to Action is a part, part of the Center for Analytical Approaches to Social Innovation at the University of Pittsburgh, or CASI. While CASI was founded in 2019, Grief to Action was created as an open call to meet and talk after George Floyd's murder in May of 2020. Our goal broadly is to support existing local efforts against systemic racism through community and student built data platforms. People have mostly learned about us by word of mouth and we've had over 150 people come to at least one meeting, all but eight of which are volunteers. Right now we've got about 30 active members across two projects. The first is the Allegheny County Policing Project, which launches at the beginning of next month which at its core is a library of over 100 police contracts for the county which contains the city of Pittsburgh. This is a first step towards empowering citizens by making it easier to understand both the legal obligations of police officers in their area, as well as the formal process for filing complaints. The second is the project I'm here to talk about, 4 and 2 Connect. This is a platform whose driving purpose is to connect Black-owned businesses to the Pittsburgh University student community through social media and online discovery. To start, I want to just very briefly motivate our focus on Black-owned businesses. This is twofold. Historically, among other inequalities, Black-owned businesses have been segregated and have had less access to financial resources in comparison to their white counterparts. And these disparities have only been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, with Black-owned businesses closing at a rate of more than two times that of their white counterparts. So now that we have a general idea of who we're trying to help, I want to give you an idea of how we approached building the platform that I'm presenting today. And maybe the first thing to say is that we did not set out to build what is now 4 and 2 Connect, but rather started exploring different solutions through an iterative process. We met once a week as an entire group, and this was a time where, for instance, community partners, our tech development team, and institutional representatives could all interact together and get a better understanding of each other's perspectives. Then we split off during the week to work with our respective teams, and then we come back the next week with questions, with solutions, with concerns. And we kept doing this until we ended up with a project we believed was not only well-defined, but in concert with existing non and for-profit organizations in Pittsburgh, which have been working to help amplify and grow minority-owned businesses long before we entered this space. One of the things our community collaborators did early on was to conduct a survey to try and understand some of the goals of black business owners. And some of the key takeaways were that while these businesses were generally looking to reach new customers and connect with their communities, they especially felt disconnected from the university community and wanted to improve this connection. And we see that some of the themes from the survey also appear in the geographic distribution of businesses in the university community. On the right, you can see a map of Black-owned businesses in Pittsburgh, which we've made in collaboration with our community partners. And the shaded area is the University of Pittsburgh community. And you can see that a significant proportion of businesses sort of fall out this, outside this area of influence. After conducting our business survey, we wanted to try and understand the other side of this connection, namely university students. What we found was a little interesting, although perhaps maybe not completely unexpected, Although almost all respondents said they wanted to support black owned businesses, only half could actually name a local black owned business. We also saw that a business's online presence was important to students. It was something that they were looking for when exploring new businesses, and it was a way that many of them were willing to interact with businesses, especially because it removed some financial and geographical constraints. Once we had learned something about the black owned businesses and university students in Pittsburgh, we thought about what was missing, what we could help facilitate. This involved not only thinking about what we could or wanted to do, but also being cognizant of organizations who had been in the space in the past and were currently still in the space. Some host business directories, while others are incubators for minority-owned businesses. 
We focused on the needs of black owned businesses, which students were uniquely suited to address. And this is how we ended up finally defining what 412 Connect was going to be a local organization curated platform to connect black owned businesses and university students through social media and online discovery. So let's outline the main functionality that we're looking for out of our platform. First and foremost, we wanna have the ability to direct students to engage with businesses' social media accounts. We also want a way for students to engage with specific pieces of information about a business, which the owner feels are important for people to know. Then, because by the nature of our platform, we'll be controlling which students see which businesses when, we wanna consciously create some construct which says that businesses will get similar amounts of exposure. Finally, we want people to continue viewing businesses on our platform. So we use badges to increase user engagement and we further incentivize activity by linking those badges to institutional recognition. As an aside, we know that students have preferences for different types of businesses, but what we don't know is how those preferences affect user engagement on this type of platform. Presumably, most students will visit our platform out of a desire to either learn about or support black owned businesses. If these are their motivations, then Will their preferences for businesses, business types actually affect which businesses they engage with? Now we can get into some more specifics of our site. This is an example of a business profile page. From here, students can complete two different types of tasks, trivia and social media. Trivia tasks are multiple choice questions about what makes a particular business unique. These answers can typically be found on a business's website or social media pages. Social media tasks direct students to follow a business on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. To get to a business's profile page, users navigate through their dashboard, which is where they're directed at sign-in. If you look at the image on the right, you can see that at the top of the dashboard, we show a student's current badges, along with the current progress towards the next badge. We have two badge types, each representing one of the task types of tasks that can be completed. The Community Explorer badge corresponds to the trivia ta tra tasks described on the previous slide, while you can get a social amplifier badge by completing social media tasks. At the bottom of the dashboard, you can see the business display, which is composed of a series of business cards, each displayed one at a time. Clicking on that card takes you to the business's profile to complete tasks. Because this display is how students are exposed to businesses on the platform, it was important that to us that we consider the order in which each student was presented with these businesses and how it could affect engagement. Now we'll go over how we did just that. The main idea is that we model the probability that a user will interact with a business based on its place in the display. And we use that to keep track of the expected number of unique interactions for each business. When a new user comes in, we choose a display order such that these expected interactions across all businesses are maintained as closely as possible. The only caveat is that we built in a randomized experiment where with equal probability, we either respect or do not respect a user's preferences when determining their display order. If we respect a user's preferences, then all in-preference businesses will be displayed before those out of preference. Otherwise, preferences are disregarded. This helps us answer the question posed earlier regarding the importance of user preferences over business types within this specific context. We've talked about what we're awarding badges for, namely trivia and social media engagement, but we haven't talked about how we decide when to award badges for progress. So how do we set our badge thresholds? When we built our model of badges, we thought about them as refreshing a user's motivation to engage with the platform. The results that we got match a lot of our intuition for how badges work in practice. For instance, the work required to get to the next badge increases with each badge obtained. However, the maximum possible amount of work required to get to another badge is bounded. And lastly, the marginal increase in expected number of clicks decreases with each badge added. Um, what this means in our application is that a small number of badges with nonlinear increasing thresholds is good. Um, something that we were really fortunate to be able to do outside of modeling was to be able to link our badges with a form of non-academic credits at the University of Pittsburgh called Outside the Classroom Curriculum. And so by leveraging this existing university structure, we were able to add another tangible incentive for students to participate. 
As we thought about how to recruit Black-owned businesses to our platform, we reflected a bit on university community work that's been done in the past. Specifically, the fact that universities have frequently created projects which replicate work that is already being done, or they end up diverting funding away from the communities they set out to help in the first place. And as a result, the community can end up feeling harmed by this attempt. In our specific case, there already exist community organizations working in Pittsburgh, specifically with either minority owned or black owned businesses. So we approach and work with these organizations in both recruiting businesses to our platform and our development process. And overall, this curation model is an acknowledgement that there are many community organizations in this space. They know black owned businesses much better than we do. And what we should do is elevate and not replicate their work. So using the curator model, we recruited black owned businesses and we actually just finished up our first launch. We ran for a month from around the start of this fall semester to a couple of weeks ago. We had eight participating businesses and 139 students using our platform. And now we're at a stage where we're going to look at the data we collected, start to understand how students are actually using our platform and ask ourselves, do we need to update our badge model? Is there an implementable display algorithm which will provide a more equal distribution of actual business engagement? And we don't, we also just don't want this to be for um, only University of Pittsburgh students. We're in the process of recruiting and engaging with other schools in Pittsburgh. And we're planning to launch again in February of 2022. So thank you so much for letting me talk to you about Foreign to Connect and the type of work we're trying to do here at Grief to Action. I just want to reiterate how much the success of this project has relied on the efforts and invaluable input of a huge group of people coming from all different backgrounds. If you're interested and you want to join us, please don't hesitate to reach out. Whatever your skill set, there's a place for you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.